Ready to get blessed with God's word. Let's begin. Shall we? How many are ready to receive the word? No, sincerely, how many would like to receive the word now? Okay, here's God dishing it out to you. Let's begin with uh, the importance of what we just received. And you, say, you can ask me, say, what did we receive, Pastor? Uh, it's called 2023. Okay? This year. It's a gift. So a lot of people are always afraid to face the future. We are not. Because the future is Christ. Simple as that. Why would you be afraid? Was, who was it who said, I am the Alpha and the Omega? What's the meaning of that? He, and what else did he say? The first and also the last. If he has covered everything thoroughly, and you're just a droplet in the, in the middle of, of this thorough thing that he has covered, what is your problem? He's covered you. From the day you were born. He's programmed it all. In fact, Pastor really is still in the, in the mother's womb. Like a, a, a tiny atom existing in the mother's and, and already Jesus saw it. He knew exactly what was going to happen to him from the day he would come out. To the day Jesus will see him. And even when we see Jesus face to face, look at your neighbor and say, it's a graduation. Okay, it's a graduation. Jesus is excited. Okay, yeah. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Thank God for the cheerleaders in this uh, house. So, um, the passage I'd like to give you today, and the title of it is, Enjoy Each Day This New 2023. We're only, what, eight days into it? We're not even finished with the eighth day. And already so many blessings, okay? So many blessings, so many things happening. And none of you died. Did you notice that? Look at your neighbor and say, alas, you're alive. Hallelujah. <laughs> so stay alive, don't die, okay? So in Psalm 118, verse 24, and I'm using the CEV. It's a very good translation where it says, let's celebrate. Hallelujah. When you're celebrating, hey, you're jolly. Look at your neighbor and say, God is asking you to be jolly good. Yeah. Mm, they didn't hear you again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, this day belongs to the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, it belongs to God. See, our problem is we think it belongs to us. No, you're only living through it. But it belongs to God. I repeat. If your, your wife or your spouse or your, your husband is a problem, it belongs to God. Ah, hallelujah. So you better rejoice, yeah? Shh. Wasn't it Jesus who said, rejoice in the Lord? Did he say, now and again? Uh, <laughs> hallelujah, I'm not happy. Rejoice in the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, always. And guys, guys, he didn't say, and that's it. You heard it. And I said, and again, I'm saying it again. You better rejoice. So if your children are being tough and difficult and embarrassing, rejoice in the Lord always. I, I, what I normally do is I leave all of them in the hands of the Lord. Who can stand against the Lord Almighty? You tell me right now. People, people, the people are pretending they're tough. They're a bunch of weaklings. That's who they are. I didn't ask for an echo, okay? <laughs> but thank you anyway. Each day from God is a gift. Why can't you behave properly? Why can't we do this? That each day from God is a gift. Um, there's more I'd like to discuss. And I don't want to interrupt myself. Next to your salvation. 
Today is the most valuable gift you will ever receive. Hallelujah, Jesus. Today, look at your neighbor and say, today. Today is the most valuable gift. Now, let's talk about this because it just recently happened. When you receive a gift, what do you do? I'm going to ask several people, okay? Kathy, what do you do when you receive a gift? I'm thankful, grateful for them giving me a gift. <laughs> of course I'm going to open it too. <laughs> no, 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 but hold on, hold on. Guys, on a normal basis, I remember when I was a kid. I was a kid. I knew how to be a kid. And so during Christmas, John, that's when our parents would give us the best gifts, really. I love my toys that they give me all the time, all the mechanized things. I'm like, all kinds of sounds. I pity my parents, you know, when the moment I get hold of them. But anyway, they will give us gifts, John. And the first thing I do is gather all my gifts. It was the proper thing to do. Or you get scolded by daddy. First thing I do is gather all my gifts. I run to my parents. I give them kisses and say, thank you. You should see their faces when you say thank you. It's not the kind of face you have right now. <laughs> they smile. And they just love it. And that's what you should do on a daily basis. God gave you a gift today. You better smile. What did he say? Frown in the Lord always. And I'm saying it. Frown. Get depressed in the Lord always. And now I'm saying it again. Depress. Is that what he said? Or did he say rejoice? Hey. Check this out. When you're rejoicing, you celebrate. Huh? John should be so happy he should be treating me to lunch, for example. Like, oh my God, Pastor God kept me alive today. Hallelujah. I have the joy of the Lord. I want to treat you to three lunches. And I said, John, half will do. I cannot even finish one, okay? And, and, and I'd like you to know, he said, don't just celebrate, be glad. Now, when you woke up this morning, and it happened to be the 8th of January 2023, did you celebrate? Did you jump up and down and say, oh my God, I'm glad. It's 2023, January the 8th. Did you? Oh, yes, liars, a lot of you. No, no, but for those who did it, baby, you're doing it the right way. Yeah? Look at your neighbor and say, from now on, baby. Tell them right now, from now on, baby. We will do that, okay? We will do it, okay? I don't want long faces. When you're in the presence of a king in the olden times, listen up. You're in the presence of the king and you're using a long face. You can get killed. He can have you beheaded. He will make sure your head will divorce from your body. He had the right to do that. You are in the presence of the king of kings. And you know what's even more convicting about it all? I didn't say condemning. Convicting. You know what, Kathy? This king lives in you. How could you not rejoice? Yeah, hallelujah. Shine, Jesus, shine. You should be singing that. <laughs> Fill this life with your grace and glory. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, if you don't listen, I will keep singing, okay? It's a threat. Hallelujah. You, of course, you thank the giver. And then the next step, Kathy, is you unwrap it. Ooh, I love it. The Word of God says every day, God is a big surprise for you. Every day. I, I, that's the reason why I, I couldn't sleep sometimes. No, not sometimes. Most of the time. So I, I don't like sleeping, okay? I'm not asking you to do that. I'm simply saying that's my attitude. I, I can't wait to wake up because Jesus and I will be doing great things. Call unto me 
and I will answer thee. And guess what I'm going to do? I will show you great and mighty things. The ones you don't know. Because the ones I know, boring. But what Jesus gives me, not boring. The only thing boring is you, not God. And you heard me clearly. That's the reason why Satan is, who used to be Lucifer, is now Satan. He was getting bored because he was full of pride and of himself. Wasn't interested in God's agenda. Okay. Be disqualified. Oof, off you go. Kicked out of heaven. And I know you're thinking, and I'm glad you are. So yes, thank the giver, unwrap it, and the best part, look at me, enjoy it. Yeah? Do you not realize, for example, if you have a child, and you woke up today, and you saw your child, child's eyes open like that, I, oh my gosh, I remember when I was, when I was a first timer as a daddy, I would watch my kid, my baby. Is it funny when there are, they're very demanding, okay? Like, for everything. Oh, my gosh. Hallelujah. I'm already helping you. You're still yelling your head off. And, you know, all these things. Uh, yeah, okay. You're a baby. So, that's okay. So, on all these things. And then, when they sleep. Oh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Hallelujah. When they sleep, when they're asleep, angels, Omega. Angels angelic look and I remember my little boy used to have this very red lips and it's like a tweety tweety bird's lip <laughs> and I feel like squeezing him he's gonna yell his head off and wake up again and I'll have to look after him for another two hours okay and I can oh, cute and then I found out in the scripture it says when you are asleep God kisses your forehead. I nearly cried one day. I woke up and Jesus said, I was dancing while you were asleep. He danced over me while I am unaware. He does that. He said, how come you didn't wake me up? And God said, you're asleep. He does that. Tina, he does it. He blesses us. What can you do? Look at your neighbor and say, what can you do? You're a fave, okay? God's fave. Hallelujah. God's favorite. How many here have been favorite? So, of, of, it doesn't matter, your teacher. Or, or, guys, the reason I like the word favorite is because I've been favorite by, oh, by even the most terrible people, i.e. my grandma. Okay? So, <laughs> I used to tell people we, we had this love and hate relationship. She loved me. I hated her. I mean, she had 85 grandchildren. Why pick me? I have chinky eyes. The rest have big eyes. Little did I know she loved chinky eyes. Now, don't regret it that you have big eyes. How many are regretting it? You have big eyes here. <laughs> Guys, can I tell you a story there quickly? So, I got teased a lot when I was a kid. Okay, because uh, in the Philippines, whether they will accept it or not, you know we tease the Chinese people. Okay, we even have in uh, beho tululawai, you know all those things, and all the, and so when people would look at me, guys, I'm not Chinese, but my eyes are. What can I do? And so I said to God, Lord, when I reach this age, listen to this for those who are insecure about your physical 
things, and I don't. Many of you are, okay? So anyway, I look at myself in the mirror, and I say, you know what, God? And I said, hmm, what? So I said, I think I'm going to have my eyes slit, you know, like, the, and, and make them look bigger. And, I got, and, and God asked me the question, what's wrong with your eyes? I said, uh, I want them bigger. And God said, I made them that way. Because I think they're beautiful. Oh, my God, I repented like there's no tomorrow. How many have done that? You repented like there's no tomorrow. I said, God, I'm so sorry. And since that time on, baby, I love my eyes now. Okay. How many love my eyes here? Raise your hands. Okay. Okay, this sermon is not about me, so let's continue, okay? Although it sounds like that, okay? So, guys, let's move on. <laughs> I forgot you. <laughs> we have people in the Zoom. So, uh, one Bible teacher wrote this. This is what he said. I make an effort to focus on and enjoy every moment of my life. This is what he said, a Bible teacher. And he was quite famous. But doing so has been a long and difficult journey for me. Because I am a planner. How many are planners here? You want to plan in advance? Uh, no, no, seriously, how many are? And <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. You will know you're a planner. You're just enjoying your breakfast and you're thinking of what to have for dinner already. Typical. And he said, if I'm not careful, I find myself planning the next thing while doing the current thing. Now, this is not new to us. You and I know that. Which, of course, steals the present moment from me. At least he admitted it. Although being focused is a good thing. I can also easily get so focused on my work that I fail to enjoy the magic of the moment. When my kid, I can only tell you about my own experience. Because if I use someone else's, I cannot even tell their names anyway. So, I remember John, he would only give me two hours of sleep. Two hours, John, max. For seven months, John. On the first four weeks that I would only sleep two hours per night. Can you imagine that, Rick? And my wife couldn't care less. Because she was tired. She just gave birth. I didn't give birth. Okay, She gave birth, and so she was entitled to it. And then she went back to work after three months or four months at that time. So, hey. I became suddenly full-time dad, full-time mom, okay? Like, say, I remember when he, John, he was probably, it wasn't probably on to the sixth week. Oh, no, no, fourth, fourth week. I'm so sorry. I, sh I shouldn't lie. And I was probably, my, my balance in my, in my what, what do you produce again? Your sleep would produce uh, serotonin and melatonin or whatever, okay? So anyway... Guys, I love my son so much. I promise you, I do. I will give my life to him. But while I was carrying him one day and trying to pacify, and I, you know when you're already feeding them and they're still crying? Because my son happened to be colicky. What can I do? What can he do? Okay? So I was feeling him, and he was crying. Guys, I'm not, for, I'm not joking you because we don't have air conditioning in Europe. In Paris, where I was living, and we had the electric fan, so I would turn it on. And that particular summer, when he was born, was super hot. And so we left the door, the window open. Seriously, guys, I was holding my son, and I look at the window. I was getting ideas. <laughs> this bundle of joy? Why did I even think of throwing him out of the window? Macarve, isn't it? And I, f 
felt so guilty. I'm so sorry, Jesus. But still, the feeling wouldn't leave, right? Just in Jesus' name. Okay, hallelujah. Of course, I felt guilty. I said, you're a pastor, and you're thinking like that. And I said, I know, no. Look at this cutie. Hallelujah. But I have no sleep. So, I went on a vacation in the sixth week. And my son was only six weeks old. We went to Ireland. And we went to a church. And the pastor's wife looked at me and said, oh, what a cutie. I remember when my little John was that size. But wouldn't give me sleep. And I went, ding, 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 ding. My, my, it became big. And I said, what did you do? She said, honestly, Pastor Bobby, I felt like throwing him out of the window. I said, oh, my gosh, I'm not the only one who's macabre, okay? And that's a mom who carried the baby nine months in her belly, feeling that way. Hey, I was a dad. <laughs> but I said to my son, sorry. Just the same. Why did I tell you this? Because years passed. And I look at my son. He was already big. Why? John, was I missing? And regretting those months when he was so cute and developing right before my eyes, growing. Why did I miss the fun? Why? And seriously, I need to be honest. I couldn't wait for my son to become Seven years old already, when he was just a baby. Because of thinking of what, the stress and everything. Especially when they're sick. Hallelujah. <coughs> but we're talking about this today because this is what I don't want you to miss in life. No matter how stressful your life is, live in the moment. Enjoy it. You take the good as well as the bad, but do it with majesty. And remember the advice of God. Rejoice in the Lord always. And once more, rejoice. Many of you say, I want to get married, I want to get married. And then you got married. Why did I get married? <laughs> my advice is baby enjoy the ride okay? <laughs> always and again I say enjoy hallelujah you can say that pastor because you're not married uh, you can't compare apples with oranges you decided to be an apple I'm an orange, baby. <laughs> okay, what I'm saying to you, although being focused is a good thing, don't forget that. I can also easily get so focused in my work that I fail to enjoy the magic of the moment. I remember you guys. Rick and Aurelia, when your baby was a preemie, the heart was defective and everything. The difficulties you went through. But look at her now. <laughs> but remember those challenging days. when you are already ushering her to go to the altar to get married, I promise you guys, those things will flash back. 
So while she's going through whatever she's going through right now, live in the moment. Next thing you know, they're already in college. Next thing you know, they're getting married. Time flies. Enjoy your life here. Enjoy your life. Look at your neighbor and say, finally, enjoy your life. With the Lord, okay? With the Lord. For example, I was usually, he said, working while my children were little and found it difficult to even take a moment to stop and enjoy the cute things they said or did. That's what he said. I miss many of those moments and I will never get them back. Never again. So now you understand me when I say live in the moment. Okay. Hallelujah. Remember when you hated so much when your mother would nag you. And, and yet why are you missing mommy now? She's dead. Why do you miss her? You failed to live in the moment. Don't do that again. Thank God for who they are and what they are. Shine for Jesus. Why would God say rejoice in the Lord always if it wasn't possible? See, what we do is we focus on the problem. We don't focus on the importance of the gift. And God wouldn't want that for us. This year, 2023, every day counts. Because this year, Brother Alan and Sister Gemma will disclose something that had never happened in your life. And but above all, focus on the blessings God is pouring out, not on a monthly basis, but on a daily basis. Can I encourage you to do something? Make a journal and list down all those things. You will never be depressed in your life if you list down all the blessings. Because when you're sad, count your blessings. Name them one by one. On the fifth one, on the third one, or God knows when, you're no longer depressed. I know you're listening. I know the wheels are turning. In your head. And yes, it's for you. It is. What did it say? This day belongs to the Lord. So stop making it too personal. Like it's for you. Hey, you and I were designed to give God pleasure. Whatever it is that makes daddy happy. Hey, ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Yeah. How many are good in dancing before God? <laughs> and then it doesn't stop there. It said, celebrate and be glad. See, that's where we have failed. We got accustomed to not celebrating. We got accustomed to not being glad. That's why we're sad. See, if you're not glad, you're sad. Am I making sense? You know, I'm not just preaching to you so you can forget this when you leave this church. Get alive. Get God into your system. Actually, I know it's, he's already in your system, but get him in your brain. The gray matter here. Let it work for Jesus. Hallelujah. I miss many of those moments, he said, and I will never get them back. We should celebrate life, he said. And the people God has placed in our path. 
Life is designed by God to be enjoyed. So when life is trying to say to you, he said, it's horrible, isn't it? Horrible. It's depressing, isn't it? So depressing. Look at him in the eyes and said, you want me to smack you? So all those things you said goes back to you. I will smack you with God's word. Where I am, where it says, I am blessed beyond the curse. Where it says, I can do all, not some, not few things through Christ. Who infuses his potent strength in me? It's not even my strength. Because when I am weak, I am strong. Some people say, oh, I don't have it. When I am poor, I am rich. When things are miserable, I am glad. When everybody's feeling defeated around me, I'm victorious. In Christ, nothing, look at your neighbor and say, nothing from now on shall move me apart from God's word. If you are man enough, then man it up. Because that's God's word. Don't be a wimpy. You don't show your strength when things are okay. It's being strong when things are too weak around you. Be the man God created you to be. Who's your strong source of strength anyway? Who is your source of confidence anyway? Who is the source of all your resources anyway? Maybe you're thinking it's you. Poor you. Pathetic you. Look at your neighbor and say, will you please stop being pathetic? Tell them right now, don't be pathetic from now on. You will never be pathetic, okay? Oh, hallelujah. We should celebrate life and the people God has placed in our path. Life is meant to be enjoyed, not dreaded or regretted. You heard me. Church, you heard me. What did I say? Not dreaded or regretted. Solomon wrote, you ready for this? Ecclesiastes chapter 224. So those people who are coming to me and they're Christians and they pretend to be really Christians and yet depressed, I look at them and I said, mm. Mm, you're not getting it. You're not getting it. I'm so sorry. Even the wisest king, the most respected man of wisdom, wrote this. He said, there is nothing better for a man than that he should eat and drink and make himself enjoy good in his labor. Look at me. How many are fond of eating here and drinking? I will repeat my question because you're pretending, okay? How many are fond of eating and drinking? Your favorite drinks. I'm not saying alcohol, okay? No, okay, if you like alcohol, oh, God bless you. Hallelujah. But, but, um, did you all hear me? How many are fond of eating and drinking here? I am. Okay, that's the meaning of IFGC, International Food. I mean, I mean, full gospel, okay? Uh, Oh, hallelujah. I think I'm drunk in the spirit. <laughs> hallelujah. You should eat and drink and make yourself enjoy good for all your labor that you've done. Yeah. Uh, see, some people, this sickens me inside here. I remember how some of my multimillionaire friends, oh my gosh, hallelujah. Because they were once poor. You get, oh, 
glory to God. God can get you out of poverty. But the problem is you stayed in poverty even when you are rich. Remember that time this multi, multi-millionaire member we had? And we were all giving away uh, our tips. John, he gave one dollar and he told the guy, can you give me the change? And he thought it was funny. Sick. Don't be afraid to spend. Did God say, from now on be thrifty? <laughs> God doesn't want you to waste. But he never said for you to be so thrifty. Okay, never mind the word thrifty because that's elegant. Stingy. Am I making sense? Uh, IFGC people, hmm? you're not exempted. Hallelujah. If you're stingy, repent. God doesn't like you being stingy. Why are you quiet? Because the wheels are turning. The problem with stingy people, even with themselves, they are stingy. Wise up, guys. It is written. You shouldn't be. Look at this. Even this, he said, I have seen is from the hand of God. Meaning to say, God approves this. John, God approves it for you to enjoy life. He didn't design you to suffer. As in, be miserable. Why would he say rejoice in the Lord? If he wants you to be miserable. Some people don't like it when I'm preaching like this. I love it. Because God pounded this on me before I even gave it to you. And God said, I want my people liberated. I want them free. I don't want them to be stuck in 2022. Because I'm giving them a better year called 2023. Look at your neighbor and say, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I, I want you to take note of the two phrases that he said. From the hand of of God is the first one. Did you see that? He said, this is from the hand of God. And that means it's God's will for you to enjoy every day. Well, some, sometimes, Pastor, you know, uh, days are sad. Says who? I saw this last night. God showed it to me. The people who will arrest Jesus Christ, the soldiers of the high priest and all this, when they arrested, this really happened when they arrested Jesus Christ. But Peter, the aggressive one, the one who said, oh, I'll die for you. That's why I, I, people who are like this will never impress me. People pretending to be aggressive, like, hur, hur. Daddy used to say to me, my dad was a top CIA agent. He looked at me and he said, those are cowards. The bullies, they're cowards. So if your husband is bullying you, you married a coward. Look at your neighbor and say, you heard that. <laughs> So when they continue being bullies, you look at them and you say, I think you better repent. Yeah? You wimpy?
because I'm not scared of you. <laughs> I remember when daddy taught me the martial arts, move. <laughs> and what he taught me was a special one, two fingers, Bobby. It doesn't matter what size the person is, he said. I guarantee you they'll stop breathing. And once he had taught me that, he looked at me, John, and he said, what's the first rule? I said, when you see an enemy approaching, run. And I, I look at him and I said, Dad, come on, it doesn't add up. And he looked at me and he said, but you have to. And I said, Dad, it doesn't add up. You don't run away from the enemy. And, God's, and Dad said, what, what, when he's ready to kill you? Yeah, sure. Rather than you being killed, you know, do the first step. And he said, do you know what that is, right? And I said, I, like I said, I'm trying to understand it. And he looked at me and he said, because now officially you're considered a deadly weapon. But don't not, do not allow me to kick your neck. I know how to dislodge your jaw with the knowledge he gave me. And so many times, guys... It's controlling, harnessing that. Especially when you are being challenged. I used to say to my children, John, when it's getting too much, I said, just don't bring your neck close to my hand. <laughs> I don't know why I'm even saying this to you, but anyway... I just want you to know, God has, oh, now I'm getting it, God. He just said it to me because of this. You ready? Write this down. Who do you think said, I have given you everything? Who said that, Gemma? God did. That will pertain to life and godliness, meaning to say, for you to make it. Hallelujah. So from the hand of God means God's will for you to enjoy every day. And the next one is make himself enjoy good. The meaning of that is you must look for things to celebrate each day. You promise me tonight, do me one thing. This is going to be good for you. Write down the things that you celebrated today. So you will start practicing this and make it a habit. Because the moment you make it a habit, one day it's a lifestyle. Yeah? But you better start from where you are. It's almost like people asking God, make me a millionaire. And yet God couldn't even trust them with $10,000. $10,000 they will steal from God. Why? They wouldn't even give God the 10%. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's what God said to me. How could I bless them, Bobby? And this is what he said to me. Do not make them leaders. Because that's not worthy of emulation. I wanted so much to bless them. Look at me. He said this to the Israelites. He said, the whole nation of you is cursed. And they look at God and he said, whoa, 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 whoa. Why? God said, you're not giving your tithes and your offerings, he said. You're not. God is saying, oh, oh, sorry. Sorry, I, I should have actually did that better. He said, the whole nation of yours. He said, why? God said, because you're stealing from me. They, uh, what did I say? What did God say? What was that, Cassandra? Stealing. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. That's how you say it. Stealing. I didn't say it. So don't get mad at me. The God who is your blesser is saying, you're stealing from me. Try stealing from the government. Try it. With your taxes, try it. You can only face two things, jail or prison. 
until you pay. God doesn't do that to you. But you know what? This is what God said to me. They're true. Bobby, they may not be physically in prison, but they're putting themselves spiritually in prison. They don't get to enjoy what I have given to them. I said everything I have given you. And this is what you're doing. Look at me. Never mind what happened in 2022. Never mind. Let's move on from there. Look at your neighbor and say, but you better start now. Today. Capish. What good is God's word if we're not going to use it? What good is God's word if we're not going to apply it or obey it? You know what Jesus once said to the disciples? He said, do you know what's wrong? He said, sometimes the, the non-believers are better than the believers. No, he didn't say better. He said wiser. Because they, they understand and they practice the principle. And God said, whereas these believers who already knew the principle, they're not doing it. I remember Jesus said, it had been better for you if you did not know the truth than for you to know the truth and you don't do it. That's negligence. That's punishable by curses, not by God. Because with, as far as God is concerned, he just wants you blessed. He removes you from curse. He who has taken us from the world of darkness into his marvelous light desires us to stay in his marvelous light. But what are we doing? Look at your neighbor and say, please stop being naughty. Tell them right now, stop being naughty from now on. Don't we naughty, naughty. Okay, don't, don't do that. Because it doesn't bless you. How many are ready to get blessed here right now? Let's all stand up. Let's stand up. Let's stand up. How many enjoy the message today? I didn't ask you to shout. I asked you to what? Okay, are we ready to? Yeah. Oh, if I was only Jesus, I would say, I saw Satan falling from the sky. Oh, yeah. He's going to be my sidekick one of these days, okay? So, hallelujah. Guys, I'm, I'm really serious. Jesus said to me, Bobby, make sure that you emphasize this. I only gave you half of the sermon. I have my other half reserved, which is even, whoa, nicer. <laughs> but you get afraid every time I say, whoa, huh? Is it wow, pastor, or whoa? <laughs> Hallelujah, it's wow. Okay, let's, let's really pray now. I'm serious. Father, in the name of Jesus, we heard your word. Uh, and we need your help. Help that we will make mature decision right now. Because your word said it clearly. That in the kingdom of God, the deal is simple. It's all or nothing. Why do we sometimes give you partial obedience, God? And content ourselves with puny blessings. We give you partial. And then we experiment and we're thinking that, I oh, say I got away with murder. And God is saying to me, you did not. If you could only see my mouth and my teeth gritting. So, Father, I myself not exempted from that. You know it so well when you were pounding this on me. So I can tell everyone your message today with full conviction. And with full experiential knowledge. 
Father, I've been bad before. But I had to make a mature decision that is to stop being bad. It wasn't a feeling, God. Because trust me, Lord, you know I didn't feel like doing it. But I know I had to. And then I saw feelings followed later. Father, what you don't want us to be. I pray that we will put an end to it. Because you, as far as you're concerned, God, you have put an end to it. But how can we still behave like a bunch of immatures? But today, Father, we all decided. Church, shall we decide? Um, I'm, I'm, oh my God, I'm seeing something. God said, form a, form a circle, Bobby, form a circle. Let's form a circle right now. And uh, let's hold each other's hands, okay? We're going to call this God's circle of covenant and love, okay? Let's call it the love circle, yeah? In the name of Jesus. Look at your neighbor right now. He said, one for all and all for one. That's not three musketeers. It's called God's people. Okay. And I'm, I'm, I'm just going to obey God, whatever he says to me. Okay. And you guys, if you have nobody to form your hands with, just do this to your own hand. Okay. So thank you, Jesus. Imagine you're part of us. God, we, we really want to end all the dramas of life. The unnecessary sufferings and sacrifices we're making. Because we know exactly what you would like us all to do. We know. You just want us to be obedient. So that we could be naturally blessed wherever we go. And, oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm hearing things. And God is saying, I, and I promise you this, as a dis, not, not discount, as an, an added blessing, he's saying, I will give you unusual favors from now on. Just for doing this today, he said, just for surrendering yourself to me and saying, Lord, I've had enough of my shenanigans, of my dramas, of all my excuses. Lame and poor, pathetic excuses. And now God, I'm making a big stand. I'm manning it up. Because your word says nothing is too difficult for you. We should be able to say the same thing, God. Nothing is too difficult for us. Because obedience Brothers and sisters, is better than sacrifice. You all heard me? Meaning to say, obedience is better than all the dramas of life. And God really means what he says. That's why he says what he means. Put an end to your drama. How many would still want to continue with your drama? And the whole church will slap you. So you will wake up. Yeah? You're pretending to be asleep? We can wake you up. I remember when pa Brother Ben died. And some of you were there during the Bible study. And we had to say, Ben, Ben! And go, oh, but when he came back, there was a difference. He was no longer... And he had no more control. He was slumping like that. And John, with his strong arms. And who else was having a strong arm there? No, there was someone else who was helping him. Uh, Sam. So they have to lift him up like that. Ben, you were kaput. But all I'm saying to you is, you see, when life comes back, Ben. You see, when God comes in, life comes in. And he's giving life to all your dead things right now. And it's happening right now. It's happening. It's moving. It's moving. Grab it right now.
is happening, God is saying, give up your drama, I'll give you my kingdom. You can enjoy my kingdom. Grab it, God is saying. It's only logical to grab it. But you better forget your old. Your 2022. So you can move on to the 2023. In the mighty name of Jesus. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant. We all receive it. We possess it. And now we're going to live it out. For the glory of the living God. And in his mighty name we pray. Everyone said... Amen, God. Amen. Will you hug that neighbor that wants to be...